Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala khatim al wa sayyid al You know, it, it's, it's very strange. I mean, it's, it's, this is one of the signs, the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I mean, and I personally feel it, and I'm sure there are others who also feel it. That, you know, when you feel, I mean, it's unbelievable, you know, after the whole day of fasting and everything, and especially for me, I mean, in my age and everything, you know, you feel that everything, the, every bit of ounce of energy has gone from the body. Uh, and but Allah SWT somehow gives the strength, brings it back. Subhanallah. Mm. It's it's mm. I mean it's mind boggling. I I it's this is from the signs of Allah SWT. So we were uh, yesterday. I told you about uh, we were on Surah um, Hamim as Sajda. So we are going through the um, meme. Nabi SAW used to love these surahs. <clears throat> He would say that, you know, and I believe I said last year, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's a hadith, he said that the Hawamim are from the, parad- you know, gardens of the paradise. So obviously because these, as I said, all these surahs emphasize the uh, aspects of Tawheed, different practical aspects of Tawheed. <clears throat> um, so we were going through uh, Surah Hamim Sajda, I told you that, you know, here, uh, what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala emphasizes the aspect is, you know, uh, giving da'wah. So that is one of the part of accepting the tawheed of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is to give da'wah, is to go out and let others know of the treasure simply that you possess. So I, I told you the story of um, <coughs> Udba bin Rabia and uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a very famous story that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how this surah was revealed. And then in this surah, Allah SWT talks about, as I said, the da'wah, the aspect of da'wah. In the beginning of the surah, <clears throat> you know, there, there, there's an ayat, and this ayat appears in different forms and uh, manners in, in different places in the Quran. Allah SWT says that to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, you know, I, it's been revealed to me that I am just, you know, first of all, I'm a human being just like you. The only difference is that I get a revelation and the revelation is that there is only one creator. It came in Surah Kahaf, it came in a lot of places, you know, Surah Anbiya towards the end of that. It comes in several places in the Quran. Uh, here, at the end of this statement, Allah SWT uh, says that, فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ so be steadfast in the deen of Allah SWT and ask for forgiveness and woe to those who are mushrikeen, those who commit shirk. And then Allah SWT uh, defines two qualities of the mushrikeen. And this is very strange. I mean, it requires a lot of, you know, uh, talking and, uh, you know, pondering on this. But I don't have the strength, but still I find it very strange. Allah SWT says, Alladheena la yu'tuna zakata wa hum bil akhirati hum kafiru. Uh, there's two qualities Allah SWT says that they don't pay their zakat and they don't believe in the akhirah. So here, I mean, and this is again my personal view, Allah SWT is talking about Muslim. Because obviously there is no, you know, there is no uh, point of view of telling uh, you know a disbeliever to pay zakat, right? He's not going to pay zakat. Zakat is only for us. So Allah SWT is telling that amongst the Muslims and believer or Muslim whoever uh, professes the kalima, and then he is not you know uh, very astute in paying his zakat, and he will be counted as a mushrik. And unfortunately, today a lot of us you know. Uh, I mean, this is the month of Ramadan, so it's very important to pay the zakat, to keep in exact, you know, I mean, yeah, our account should be to the last penny and try, we should try and pay extra from my pocket to be on the safe side. You know, I just want to be on the safe side. I don't want to be ha- caught for this, you know, uh, so it should be calculated to the last penny and paid extra. This is my personal view, I'm telling you. This is not, you know, any alim or, or you know scholar it's my personal view because it's such a dangerous matter in different places in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes those who do not pay zakat 
what will how they will be dealt on the day of judgment and as i said here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is counting them amongst the mushrikeen and obviously who does not though a person who doesn't pay zakat then he does not have the fear of the day of judgment automatically because zakat is one of the pillars of uh, the deen if if someone doesn't pay zakat then obviously he doesn't feel that he will be held accountable so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines these two qualities of a mushrik then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to again this surah has a distinction uh, the only place in the quran you know in a lot of places uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran that he created the heavens and the earth in within six days you know uh, <laughs> in surah hud lot of places allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <laughs> but here <coughs> excuse me but here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the only place in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the break up of the six days how he how many days he created the earth how many days he created the heaven so the break up of the six days is given here then then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about because obviously the surah is about the dawa so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about you know uh two kind of people the one who uh those who give engage in giving dawa what is there and is going to be and those people to whom the dawa is given and they refuse the dawa what is there you know what kind of ending are they going to face so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with the people of ad and uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives their example uh that you know a lot of messengers came to them and they gave them the dawa allah ta'budu illa allah don't worship anyone except allah so dawa was given to me them but you know the people of ad who the alayhi salam came to them but the people of ad they were arrogant and they said that you know uh, i mean who is more powerful on the face of this earth than us and one of their characteristics was that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them they were literally allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in other places in the quran that they would carve out their you know um, residence from the mountains so they were so huge that they could stand up and you know carve the mountain to make a shelter for themselves so they said you know at you know having this size and this might and this power who is there uh, more powerful than us on the face of this earth so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know reminds them that you know uh, the one more powerful is the one who created you your creator is more powerful than you and then so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that you know what happened to them for their arrogance and more for not accepting the dawa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that fa arsalna alayhim rihan sarsaran you know the storms the winds they came and they you know uh, uh they knocked them off ground i mean they were giants but they were thrown away in another place allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives uh, um example in surah al-haqqa that they were you know thrown away knocked off the ground like you know uh date palm trees and thrown in distance so obviously a very uh, you know tormenting wind uh, and tornado and allah alam whatever kind of you know punishment it was that it came but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the wind farsalna alayhim rihan sarsara that a severe wind came to them and it it blew for a number of days and they were destroyed and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives their example and so then after this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the picture of the akhira again you know uh, letting those who do not believe in the tawhid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you don't accept the dawa you will end up like this in this dunya and then what is going to happen to you on the day of judgment and here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know brings a picture of the akhira and explaining that you know when <clears throat> on the judgment when these people when they come uh, they, their their body parts their limbs and even their skin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says shahida alayhim sam'uhum wa absaruhum wa juluduhum their eyesight their ears and their julud their skins they will testify for what they have done and they will be you know at this you know those people will be amazed and they will say to their skins wa qalu li juludihim lima shahidtum alayna why are you testifying against us uh, and the skin will reply back to them that you know qalu antaqana allah al antaqana allah alladhi antaqa kull shay'in wa huwa khalaqakum awwal marra 
the, you know, it will say that Allah has given us the power to speak as he has given today the power to everybody, everything to speak. And he is the one who created us. So I mean the skins mean their skins will also be scared of Allah and they will give testimony. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, uh, you did not think, you wouldn't think that your skin and your limbs will testify against you. And you thought that Allah would not know a lot of things. So it is not like that. So be prepared for this day. And if you want, don't want to be in this situation, then accept the da'wah that is being given to you, given to you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, describes the quality here of the Quraysh people of Quraysh. This is Abu Jahl. He used to say that when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would, would be, you know, uh, giving da'wah to anyone and reciting the Quran to them, what they would do, he would do is he would say that, you know, make a lot of noise. He would have, and there was another person, I forget his name. He had, you know, he'd employed some uh, singing girls and their job, he had told them that your job is only when you see Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is you know talking to someone and reciting the Quran, you stand there and you sing and you beat the drums and you sing and you distract them. This is what their job was. So I mean Allah SWT brings that that Waqalina Kafaru La Tasmaulihadil Quran Walgaufi The disbelievers they say that don't listen to this Quran and you know make a lot of noise so that you overpower the the sound or the you know the recitation of this Quran, so uh, this is for that those people. But even today, if we look, you know, the situation is not very different. I mean, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has clearly said that when the Quran, وَإِذَا قُرِيَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا in Surah Al-Araf, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, when the Quran is being recited, uh, listen to it very carefully and keep quiet. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ so that my mercy would, you know, uh, cover you. But we see, you know, in the masajid and different places, we see that the Quran is being recited, the Quran is being talked about, and, you know, we are engaged in our own conversation or, uh, you know, worldly talk or whatever, you know. I mean, we see things like this. So, I mean, we should be careful lest we fall into the category of this ayah, those who, you know, these people who try to, overpower the Quran and then after that in the end Allah SWT, you know brings the picture of those people who give as remember I told you that you know one is those who give the da'wah and those who uh, uh, are, are you know who receive the da'wah and they reject so their end we see and here Allah SWT talks at the end about those people who uh, give the da'wah Allah SWT says that, you know, uh, those who are in, in the path of Allah SWT inviting others, you know, when the when their last moment comes, when the death approaches them, Allah SWT says, Inna ladhina qalu rabban allahu thumma staqamu. Those who say that our, our, our Rabb is Allah SWT and they're steadfast on this statement. Tatanazzalu alayhimul malaikatu. At the last moment, you know, the, the angels come down to them and they give them, you know, uh, glad tidings and they tell them not to be scared allah takhafu don't be scared wala tahzinu and don't you know don't grief you know abshiru bil jannah and they give them glad tidings of the paradise that has been prophet uh, you know, promised to them so for those i mean very high status for the people who are you know in the uh, field of giving da'wah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is how their last moment comes and they give them glad tidings and they say that, you know, we are your, we were your helpers in this dunya and we will be with you in the akhirah. We will remain with you. So don't worry. And whatever you desire, whatever you want, it will be yours. So, you know, just giving them, you know, comfort at a time of hardship when the death is coming, you know, telling them, say, take it easy. Don't be scared. This will pass. We are with you. So this glad tiding comes to those people. And then Allah SWT says that, you know, why they are getting this glad tidings? Why? Because they have spent their life, they have spent their time for, you know, giving the da'wah. Allah SWT says, whose word is better than the person who calls others towards the path of Allah SWT and he does himself good and righteous deeds and he says that I am a Muslim. <clears throat> So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, explains their qualities, the qualities of the da'i. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another very important lesson here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is one 
properties that the da'i must have. وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا سَيَّةُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that evil and uh, you know, something good and something evil cannot be the same and repel something evil with something good. And if you do that, then you know the first enemy will become your bosom buddy. So if you are giving da'wah and if somebody is you know, uh, uh, you know, responding back in a, in a bad manner, cursing you or whatever, you need to keep your calm. You don't need to respond back in the same manner. You just need to be calm. You need to keep your ikhlaq and you know everything. And if you continue to do that, eventually, if you hold on to the patience, then that person will you know have, be inclined towards you. And Allah says that وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَذِّنْ عَظِيمٌ This quality is not given except to the one who have patience and the ones who are ذو حذن عظيم you know if i simply translate the most the luckiest people on the face of this earth so this term this term the term ذو حذن عظيم comes twice in the quran one is here and one we already read in surah al qasas when you know the qarun comes out the people look at his glory and pomp and they say that you know innahu la ذو حذن عظيم he is the luckiest person on the face of this earth so that over there is of you what we look at you know you know to us bill gates is the you know luckiest person on the face of this earth but allah is one thing actually this person who is inviting others towards the path of allah and he has patience and he does not you know he deals in the best manner and he does not respond back you know with rudely and you know uh, engaging them in a bad manner he is the luckiest person on the face of this earth so it's from the dunya's point of view, from the akhirah's point of view, two definitions of lucky people. <clears throat> so then there are a lot of other things, but you know, I want to go to the other surah. So inshallah, then after this surah, the shura, uh, we will do today. It is the third surah in the um, uh, the Hamim series. And here... <clears throat> Here, the aspect that is uh, emphasized is to establish, you know, the collective, you know, practical tawhid in our life. And in such a way that there is no difference between, you know, there is no division within the religion. So tawhid does not mean, and I, this is what I mean by it. Tawhid does not mean that I know it, I, uh, you know, I realize it, I understand it, and I practice it, you know, within my family and I'm living in this house and that's it. You know, what's happening outside that is none of my concern. Allah SWT wants to establish a society that is based on the principles of Tawheed, a jamaat, a group. Uh, the Quran and Islam, you know, emphasizes the establishment of a jamaat, uh, a group, a society, and you know, that is the largest level. But if you can, you know, you have to start the society, right? So you start with yourself, your family members, and then you, you know, talk to your uh, uh, friends and relatives in the locality. And then we get together and then we establish a masjid. So we establish a community. So that community, that masjid, you know, for example, Masjid Osman is based on the principles of Tawheed. And we are collectively established, trying to establish Tawheed, uh, you know, within. Uh, the, the boundary of uh, Masjid Osman and those who are involved in there. So Allah SWT said that you have to establish this and you have to establish in such a way that there is no division. This is what Allah SWT emphasizes here. Uh, and the ayat in, in this uh, surah, <clears throat> surah Shura, that emphasizes that and Allah SWT comes again and again uh, with the subject. Allah SWT says to Nabi SAW, شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ That, oh my messenger, I have, you know, made, uh, given you the sharia. The word sharia comes from this word, شَرَعَ لَكُمْ I have made it for you, uh, a deen, and it is the same deen. مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحًا It is the same religion, same deen that I had given to Nuh, وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ and what I have, uh, you know, uh, revealed. So all the, you know, 
Ulul Azam messengers are mentioned here. Allah SWT said they all received the same deen. There was no difference. Their deen was what? Islam. Submit to Allah SWT. So this is the deen that I gave. And what was the command that I gave them? An aqimu deen. Establish the deen in your life. Wala tatafarraqu fi. Number two, don't create divisions amongst yourself. Unfortunately, you know, this aspect of Tawheed, we are way, way, you know, we are, we are lacking this as the Ummah today. So Allah SWT says that you establish the deen, you know, collectively in a community and make sure that there are no divisions within the community. They should all be one. They should be all, you know, there is only one deen. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no other branches or anything. So here Allah SWT in this surah emphasizes this aspect. You know, and Allah SWT tells Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, You know, call them towards this aspect of the deen and be steadfast like the way I have commanded you. And don't follow their desires. So this, you know, this aspect is emphasized here. And then Allah SWT goes on to you know, talk about, you know, when you establish this uh, communal, uh, the deen on a community basis, what should be the qualities of those people? Uh, you know, what, what kind of people, what kind of community are you looking to achieve? And Allah SWT counts their qualities that number one, you know, uh, they are, they know that the life of this world is, you know, it's a temporary life. Uh, it will end and the akhirah is forever. Number two, they have tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, وَالَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ They avoid the major sins. You know, those people make sure that they avoid the major sins. And number four, they avoid the anger. Um, you know, they, they, when they are given the call, when the call for the deen is given to them, they say love back. They respond back to you know, the call of establishing salat, paying the zakat. So when they hear the call to establish the deen, they respond to that call. They are not deaf to that. And then Allah SWT says that, you know, wa amruhum shura bainahum. And when, you know, they consult with each other on matters in a community. It is not that, you know, Islam does not, you know, say that, you know, Nabi Wasallam himself, he would always consult the Sahaba Ajmain on all the matters. He would take their consultation. So, so they, you know, there should be consultation within the community for deciding important matters and things. And they spend from the money that they have in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, you know, when somebody transgresses against them, you know, they, they help those people who are oppressed. They do not side with the transgressors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts all these qualities for those people, uh, they need to develop in themselves when they are establishing the deen on a community level uh, rather than an individual level. So this is what you know the surah emphasizes. Uh, and then at the end of the surah, Allah SWT talks here about the different ways that the wahi that Allah SWT communicates with his prophets and messengers. You know, Allah SWT said that. Uh, uh, it is either Miwara hijab behind a curtain or he sends a messenger Yasha. So Allah SWT talks about the different methods of Wahi at the end of the surah. Then the next surah that we will do, and I will combine the, the, the next two surah, uh, Surah Zukhruf and Surah Dukhan, both of them. Um, in both these surah, the aspect that is emphasized is, you know. Uh, uh, the opposite of Tawheed, which is shik, Shirk, and then especially Shirk, what the ulama, the Mufassirin say, Shirk fil Hakimiya, you know, Shirk committed by the rulers, because you know, obviously, you know, and we are going step by step. So in the last one, Allah SWT is talking about establishing a community. So what the community is established, obviously, and then when the community is established, or a, you know, a country is established or based on the deen of Allah SWT, there, there's going to be rulers, right? So for they, those rulers, Allah SWT is telling them that make sure that in your rule, there is no shirk. There should not be any shirk in your rule. 
you should rule based on the Tawheed. And Allah SWT gives the examples in these surahs that what happens, you know, who examples from the history of those who committed shirk fil hakimiyah. Allah SWT gives the example, the very prominent example of Fir'aun, that when Musa AS came to him and gave him the da'wah, what did he say? Allah SWT says, وَنَادَ فِرْعَوْنُ فِي قَوْمِهِ He called upon his people and he said, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرَ Is this not my country? Is Misr not my you know, country? وَهَذِي الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي And you, don't you see this river Nile you know, flowing before my, underneath my feet? أَفَلَا تُبُسِرُونَ Are you blind? Don't you see that I'm the ruler of this country? You know, am ana khairu min hadha alladhi huwa mahinu wa la yakadu yudin. Am I better or this, you know, uh, stuttering person who can't even explain himself clearly? Um, so, so Allah SWT is saying that don't be a hakim, a ruler like this, who becomes arrogant and he proclaims, you know, as, uh, from what Allah SWT has given him the hakimiyat, that he proclaims that he himself is the God. You know, you know uh, as Fir'aun said in the Quran, Allah SWT says, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. I am your, you know, Lord. I am your God. I am the greatest of your gods. So don't become a, uh, a mushrik in your hakimiya. So these, this aspect emphasized in both these surahs, uh, Surah Dukhan and Surah uh, Zukhruf. Surah Dukhan also Allah SWT talks about Laylatul Qadr, the revelation of the Quran. Uh, you know, the, the status of that night. And also in that surah, Allah SWT, you know, explains obviously after that, you know, those who uh, commit shirk in their uh, ha hakimiyat, in their rule, then Allah SWT defines their end in the end, in the uh, hellfire, how they will end up, what kind of punishment they will face. And obviously after that, the, the ending of the just rulers is also explained in there. The last surah that we are doing today, um, you know, uh, Surah Jafia. So it is the last, the fifth surah in the series of Hamim. And then tomorrow, Surah Ahqaf, which is, that is the last sixth surah. So Surah Jafia that we will do today, again, it's a short surah. And again, here the topic, uh, you know, uh, of Tawheed, remember if I, we touched upon it, Allah SWT is saying that, you know, uh, beware of different things that and try to corrupt your Tawheed. So, you know, after having all these aspects, establishing the practical Tawheed, and you have, you know, established a community, and so you are living a life. So now be aware, the shaitan is going to come in different forms and try to, you know, uh, uh, dilute your Tawheed and invite you towards the shirk. And one of the most important of those things that we talked about the other day, that is one that is described here, the shirk of the desire. The shirk of the desire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. At that time of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, this shirk was, I mean, it was not very prevalent as it is today. At that time, still, you know, they were worshipping idols and there were other forms of shirk. Uh, today, this is, I mean, this shirk is the one that we are, uh, na'uzu billah, we are very much engaged in. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, man ittakhada ilahahu hawa. Have you seen a person who has taken his desires as his ilah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has misguided him. Because of what? Because him taking his uh, desire as his ilah. And I, you know, the other day I was giving you a simple example that we, we are con confronted with uh, two situations or two ways. One as advised by the Quran and one uh, what our desire, my desire is telling me, you know, and my desire is telling me to do one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is telling me to do something else. My desire overpowers me. And then I start, you know, I follow my desire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the person who does that, and, and it, you know, very dangerous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains here, that if you do that, then this is what I will do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will misguide you. <laughs> And I will put a barrier, you know, I will put a curtain. I will put a, you know, uh, a stamp. I will seal his ability to hear and his ability to think. Meaning, you know, the Quran will be recited in front of that person again and again and again. 
and I mean, it's not having any effect. It's go going through one ear and coming out the other, having no effect on the heart. You know, as we read in the earlier ayat, ثُمَّ تَلِينَ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ you know, the, the hearts become soft listening to the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the one who follows his desire, he will not have any effect whatsoever. I will seal his, uh, you know, senses, his hearing, his eyesight, his heart. You know, when he is called upon, he will not, it will not have any effect whatsoever on him. He will be totally misguided. And in front of his eyes, I will bring a curtain. I mean, it will be right, right, Quran is right in front of us, but you know, I mean, we, we can't see it. Why? Because my desire has overpowered it. And so Allah SWT then says that, who is there to guide a person whom I misguide? So <clears throat> Allah SWT save us, uh, you know, from this kind of shirk. So this shirk uh, that destroys the tawheed from internally after doing all this, uh, you know, Mujadila of establishing the Tawheed in our lives is very dangerous and that is what is emphasized here. Uh, so this is the end of the 25th Juz. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We have a few minutes if anybody has questions, inshallah. <coughs> um, Sheikh Zubair, one question uh, a brother asked was, yeah. um, as we're talking about the practical tawheed, the mm -hmm. brother said that they were um, prior to the class, I, I think this was sent earlier on, they were saying that um, they understood only two types of practical shirk uh, and they they thought one of them from yesterday was the shirk of desires and then they said in Surah Kaf we read about shirk from wealth what are other types of practical shirk? So there are so there are a lot of practical shirks, you know. As we read in Surah Al Kahf, uh, like you said, you know, uh, there is the shirk of the wealth. Then there is the shirk of the power. You know, uh, I, I have I have some kind of an authority. I have power. You know, uh, and and I I am drowned in that power, and I think that I am the ultimate sublime authority. So I commit shirk, you know, from from my authority. Um, so there, that is also a form of shirk. Then you know, um, as I said, you know, desire is obviously the most popular type of, most common type of shirk that we commit today. So anything, if you if you can think it from this point of view, anything that in this dunya is that is you know because this dunya is a deception, it it's a deception for us. Anything that is deceiving me. So for example, if you know. I'm in love. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong on liking something is dunya because Allah SWT says that, you know, whatever is halal, you can consume as much as you want. There is nothing, for example, there is nothing wrong if I like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. But, you know, uh, the love of that Lamborghini or Ferrari, if it distracts me away from the, uh, you know, the remembrance of Allah SWT, as we read Suleiman alayhi salam, he loved those stallions. He loved, he used to love stallions. So, but, but when that distracted him away, he immediately realized, you know, this is going, this is, this is impeding me from the remembrance of my Lord. And eventually it will lead towards shirk. You know, it starts slowly. It doesn't immediately become shirk. It leads towards shirk. So any material thing that we are involved in, you know, and as we said, you know, uh, this is uh, what you know. One of the eight important categories that we read in Surah Tawbah, if you remember. So family members, that is also, you know, they, they might lead us to shirk. That if I'm giving preference to my family, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, your your wife, your your children, you know, my children, they want to do something, but my deen is preventing them. And but out of my love for my children, I start doing that, you know. So that is leading me to, that will lead me towards shirk. Uh, my family is, you know, uh, involved in doing something that is not right. And instead of advising them, instead of, uh, you know, admonishing them, if I fulfill their desires and I, you know, I become a part of what they're doing, which is against the deen, that is a form of shirk. Because eventually it will lead towards that. So anything that is materialistic in this dunya, wealth, 
power, status, anything that is, you know, uh, that is a social relationship that Allah SWT has created mm -hmm. for us. If any of those things, they become, you know, they overpower the command of Allah SWT. Anything that overpowers the command of Allah SWT. So that is, you know, that will lead us towards the shape. Does it make sense? I think I got it. Um, the brother, if you understand. Jazakallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. In a way, it kind of uh, <clears throat> seems, I think, uh, to boil it down, it's almost like making sure we have our priorities straight. That yes, Allah yes. Allah should be. What Allah is saying that make sure that, you know, nothing goes above the command of Allah and his messenger. Anything that goes above that, then you are headed towards shirk, eventually. Okay. And then in the, in the Quran, Allah SWT, uh, specified some of the things that very often yeah. get people, like wealth, power, desire, family. Yeah. Is knowledge also? Of course, of course. And the example is uh, uh, in Surah Al-A'raf, uh, the story of one of the very uh, learned persons from the time of Musa, salam, his name was Ba'alam Bawra. So Allah SWT gave him knowledge and gave him tremendous knowledge uh, to the extent that he thought that he was more knowledgeable and more uh, supreme than Musa alayhi salam. So Allah SWT gives this example. Allah SWT gives the example that he, he, you know, I gave him all the knowledge. If he wanted, he could have used that knowledge to, you know, elevate his status in my sight. But you know, he did not. He used that knowledge for the dunya. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, anything, anything that that you know overpowers a, a command of Allah SWT. Because I mean, arrogance. If that knowledge brings arrogance, mm -hmm. arrogance is shit. Right, right. Shakespeare, a, a question uh, comes to my mind. I apologize if it sounds uh, naive. Mm. The things that you mentioned, you know, following our nafs, uh, and uh, in a in a in a in a negative way, and and committing a a sin, for example, a kabira or a sagira. So would would that amount to sh to shirk also? No. If it's a no. if it's a if it's a kabir, for example, you know, you're doing something out of your uh, nafs is 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 making you do some something bad, and would that amount to shirk? So this is the situation of the believers, as Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a lot of hadith, and the Quran is also teaching us, you know, the believers are, the, the Iman is like a, you know, it's a graph, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, right? That's what's happening with us. We are in, that, that, that is, as I said, you know, one of the reasons Allah SWT says that stay in the company of the righteous people. So your graph will, you know, uh, be going up and at least it will be flat and not going down. So, I mean, if we commit sin, major sins, obviously Allah SWT says that, you know, He's given us the power of Tawbah uh, that it will wipe out everything, right? So, I mean, it, it you know, committing major sin and if we do something like that, even if we commit something like shirk, there are two things. One is committing it and then realizing it and then wiping it off. The second thing is committing it and being persistent in it and thinking that there is nothing wrong with it. So these are two different aspects. You understand? We are all weak. We commit these mistakes day in and day out. But the thing is that when we realize that we have done something wrong, we immediately return to Allah SWT, we repent and we make sure that we don't commit that again. But the other thing is that, you know, I'm doing this, uh, you know, for example, as an example, I'm engaged in riba, you know, and then somebody's telling me that this is wrong and I'm arguing with him that, no, you cannot do it. There's no other choice. I'm really living in this world, you know, blah, 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 all these arguments that I bring forth. So that is being persistent. So then I, I mean, then I'm involving, not, not only involving myself in shirk, but I'm being persistent about that shirk and justifying my shirk. You understand? So there is a difference. I hope it, I hope I, Jazak, made, I hope I made myself.
Uh, one one brother commented that um, <clears throat> what you were just saying right now, Sheikh Zubair, uh, mm -hmm. the hadith of Anas, uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Remember, the does not take you out of the uh, realm of Islam. The you mean the kabai doesn't take uh, even the kabai don't take you out. We remember we read in Surah Zumar, "Qul ya ibadi al-ladina asrafu ala anfusikum la taqnatu min rahmatillah." Inna Allah yaqrub zunuba jamia. So uh, even if the kabai are committed, it doesn't make them mean that you are becoming a disbeliever. So tawbah is such a powerful weapon, you mm -hmm. know. It wipes out everything, but you know what Allah Subhanahu is telling is make sure that you are you don't become you know uh, enshrined in those uh, kind of actions and defend them. You mm -hmm. know when you commit a mistake, realize that it's a mistake, repent and uh, you know change your course. That is what Allah wants. Allah Subhanahu will make us from the tawabi. Amen. Amen. One last, if anybody, nobody has a, uh, a question. Does anybody have a question, Imam Sir? No, I, I don't see any other questions. <clears throat> One last comment, it came to my uh, mind, you know, we, Imam Sir just said, may Allah make us from the Tawabin. So we are in the, uh, today is the third night, right? The third odd night. Mm. Uh, it's very important to remember, uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in these nights, there are four people who uh, whose tawbah is not accepted, even in these nights. Allah SWT forgives everyone. But there are four categories of people, their tawbah is not accepted. Unless and until they, I mean, they, they are not forgiven. Not that their tawbah is not accepted, they are not forgiven. I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. Nabi Sallallahu said that they are not forgiven in this night. Four kind of people. Number one, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the person who, uh, in, in the hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the person who is uh, involved in consuming alcohol, uh, but in the days that we are living it, the ulama say that, you know, because alcohol is intoxication, so any kind of intoxicants that, you know, a person is addicted to, whether today we there are lots of um, alcohol, you know, heroin or I mean there are too many meth and whatever so many names of these intoxicants so one is the person who is you know addicted to intoxication so he is not forgiven two Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you know it a, a children who you know who are who break the heart of their parents because the word that he used is you know uh, um I'm, I'm, the word is not coming in my mind. Arabic word that he used, it literally means to tear something. So, qa'a, uh, the word is qa'a. So, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever, you know, they, they tear the heart of their parents, not disobedience, there's a difference. Disobe I mean, you know, uh, even where Allah SWT in Surah Bani Israel says, you know, that not to raise your voice in front of the parent, but Allah SWT again after that says that, you know, I mean, in the course of a life, sometimes the situation arises, my voice raises, then I go back and I ask for forgiveness for my parents. So that is, that is something normal. But, you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who tears, the, breaks the heart of his parents, means he is totally, you know, utterly disobedient to the parents. That is the second person. Third is a person uh, who, you know, who is trying to, who is engaged in, you know, um, cutting the, uh, you know, relations of the Raham. And we read this in Surah al -Hud. This is one of the qualities of Ulul Al-Bab, if you remember, that they do not cut these uh, relations. They maintain the, you know, uh, relationships of kinship of the womb. So anybody who is engaged in that, you know, creating differences within the families or family members and, you know, uh, breaking the relationship, he is not forgiven. And number four, the person who has some kind of, you know, some rancor, some some jealousy in his heart against someone. So these four people, uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on in these nights, they are not forgiven unless and until they they repent specifically about these things and they you know change their ways. They will not be forgiven. 
so it's very important we need to make sure that our hearts and if you look at these four things three are related to you know social matters so we need to make sure that our hearts are clean and you know against anyone and we are you know doesn't matter if somebody has any you know disagreements with me we should make sure our heart is clean i have nothing against anyone so otherwise you know all our efforts in this night is go to waste may allah save us all jazakallah assalam alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum assalam wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah jazakallah khair jazakallah sheikh zubair jazakallah khair one thing for the brothers and sisters before i forget as well um with sheikh zubair we uh, had a mashwara about how to go about the the next couple of days because we will probably have 29 days of ramadan but we have 30 ajza to go over so we were thinking um you know should we all just try to finish everything by thursday night which would be the 29th night or um should we utilize friday night which would be eid night uh cuz most of us i think will be at home i don't think anyone's going out uh because of the situation uh so th- that's one of the thoughts maybe we can um you know cut you know come back one more time on the what do you call it on friday night to finish the 30 ages or maybe uh some other ideas if any brothers and sisters have <clears throat> how about uh, everyone thinks about it and then tomorrow we could bring it up again inshallah cuz i know it's getting late so just think inshallah. think about that and then tomorrow we'll we'll bring that up again inshallah <coughs> um somebody asked about donation bashir uncle someone asked uh, how can is bashir uncle still here um bring that a, a question up to ranchal so then we can uh, guide you properly what to do and how to do what you need to do inshallah jazakallah khalid bhai has sent an email today again Uh, not email a message on the whatsapp which can be forwarded to the brother okay inshallah so um brother uh, brother coffee if you can just uh, privately text me on the um, on the message your number so then i can send you the 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 messages on whatsapp or through text Jazakallah. Jazakallah khair, Amir bhai. Jazakallah khair to everyone. Jazakallah khair to everyone. Jazakallah khair to everyone.